All right, so today we're going to be looking at the carbon cycle. Uh, maybe this is something you studied in biology. I think you probably did, but let's just get on it. Okay, so uh, first of all, carbon dioxide is obviously a component of our atmosphere. I'm sure you know that. Uh, but, you know, it's actually a rather small component of the atmosphere, uh, remarkably small. Uh, basically, carbon dioxide at this point in uh, human civilization, we'll talk about this later in the year quite a bit, but it's about 410 parts per million in terms of the weight of, of atmospheric gas, uh, which is not a whole heck of a lot. It works out to be about 0.04% of the atmosphere. It's a very important component of the atmosphere for reasons we'll learn this year, but it's a very small component of the atmosphere. Now, uh, but it's very important in terms of both the world's uh, thermal equilibrium, and it's also important in terms of life. Uh, so uh, let's just see exactly how this moves in and out of uh, the atmosphere. So basically, the process by which carbon dioxide, and a lot of times we'll just say carbon for short, right? the way that carbon dioxide moves into and out of the atmosphere is called the carbon cycle. Uh, and basically, it's a series of, of chemical, physical, and biological mechanisms that all come into play to determine where these carbon atoms are going to go. <clears throat> so there's basically two processes that move carbon uh, out of the atmosphere, and a number of them put it back in the atmosphere. So the two processes that will take it out of the atmosphere are photosynthesis, and the other one is diffusion. It just uh, it just diffuses into the seawater, just kind of like uh, uh, you know when they make soft drinks at a movie theater, you know they have a carbon dioxide machine that just pushes the carbon dioxide into the water. Uh, but now the processes that 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 contribute carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere would include respiration. When you breathe out, you breathe out carbon dioxide. I think you know that. Uh, the ocean, just as as carbon dioxide can diffuse into it, it can also diffuse out of it. Um, Anytime anything burns, wood, uh, you know, coal, gas, whatever, anytime something's burning, it's releasing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And the other thing is volcanic activity. So uh, carbon dioxide is a component of volcanic gases for reasons that we're going to get to in just a few minutes. So here's a diagram of it. It's not the best diagram. There's a million different uh, ways of representing this, but basically uh, we have we, we see here we have carbon dioxide going into and out of the oceans. We see we have uh, forest fires and volcanoes contributing and, and factories contributing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. We have the respiration of organisms in the soils and cows putting it into the atmosphere. Uh, and then basically what we have even plants respire. Don't forget, they don't just undergo photosynthesis. They also respire. Uh, but... Uh, we do have uh, photosynthesis that takes it out. So the two mechanisms that are taking it out are photosynthesis and, and ocean uptake. So photosynthesis, yeah, I know you did this in biology, but let's just go through it again in simple. We're not even gonna talk about uh, Krebs cycle or anything like that. All you need to know basically is this. Plants take water out of the soil. We're talking about terrestrial land plants here. They take carbon dioxide into their stomata uh, in their leaves. They take light energy, break the bonds between these molecules, and rearrange them into sugars. And then they release oxygen out of the atmosphere. So basically, the energy that came in from the sun ended up getting trapped in this molecule here. But the net result is this molecule is in the plant, and the carbon dot that was that was used to make it came out of the atmosphere. So it's a net reduction in atmospheric carbon as a result of photosynthesis. Now, respiration, if you recall, is just the exact opposite equation of photosynthesis. And plants do it. All organisms do it, uh, with the exception of a few uh, um, uh, anaerobes and, and, and chemosynthetic organisms that are really kind of not that crucially important in terms of, of environmental science. But if you look at respiration, it's just the exact equation turned on, on the opposite direction. So you have, uh, in this case, we have glucose plus oxygen, and then what it gets turned into is carbon dioxide, water, and energy. So you eat something that contains carbohydrates, you breathe in oxygen, uh, and you basically, in your mitochondria, there's a process that ends up converting this large energy-containing molecule in a carbon dioxide and water, which you then exhale, and then you use the energy to run your body. But the point is, that respiration process put carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Things respire, living things respire. People do it, 
plants do it, mushrooms do it, bacteria do it. So, so you know, it is a major activity that's happening that's putting carbon dioxide back in the atmosphere. Now, combustion, uh, that means the burning of things, burning of, of hydrocarbons, basically, uh, is very, very identical. I mean, the only thing that changes is what the carbon molecule is. So here's respiration. Well, here's gasoline, octane. And you'll see you get the same products. Carbon dioxide comes out of the, the, the exhaust of a car. Carbon dioxide comes out of the exhaust in your mouth. Carbon dioxide comes out of a chimney when you burn wood. Carbon dioxide comes out of a factory when they burn coal. So burning produces carbon dioxide. Now, these are decomposing organisms. They're non-photosynthetic. And they're basically eating this wood slowly over time. And basically, when things eat, like you and me, or rush mushrooms, they breathe out carbon dioxide. So there's a lot of decomposers in the forest litter, in the soil, and all of them are putting carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. Now, it's going to be a pretty important thing in this class to understand what fossil fuels are. So we'll first touch on it right now today. So coal and oil are the two main fossil fuels, well, I guess natural gas as well, that we use in our society. And they basically uh, are formed when dead plant material doesn't have a chance to decompose. So if I have a tree or a, a phytoplankton that dies and is put into a situation where there's very limited oxygen, let's say, and, and decomposing organisms just can't can't respire because it takes oxygen to respire, then the carbon compounds within those that tree or that, that phytoplankton, they, may, they remain trapped in that state. So the carbon is basically sequestered or sealed up as a, as a reservoir, if you will. And so, so coal, oil, and natural gas are called fossil fuels, and, and they all have this, this similar trait in that you had a photosynthetic organism for coals or trees, for oil and natural gas, it's mostly plankton. And they died and ended up in an in a environment that was not conducive to respiration. So their energy got trapped there and then just stayed there for millions of years. So let's start with coal. So coal is formed when trees died hundreds of millions of years ago, back in the uh, uh, Carboniferous period at the end of the, um, uh, the Paleozoic time period. And basically there was all kinds of swamps all over the planet. And then when these trees would fall down into these swamps, the swamp water was very low in oxygen and high in acidity, and it just was not conducive to bacteria to decompose these trees. So these trees just sat there at the bottom. And over time, over millions and millions of years, you just had these big pileups of, of dead trees. And then as, as, as the dirt and stuff piled up on top of them, it sort of mushed them down and heated them up and they got converted into coal. Coal is basically just pure carbon, but that carbon was originally carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, but it was in the atmosphere hundreds of millions of years ago, and now it's just sitting underground uh, in coal. Oil and natural gas are formed in, in a very, very similar way. In this case, they're formed in the ocean, usually a little bit offshore. And what happens is they're showing like octopi and fish and seahorses, but in reality, it's mostly phytoplankton and some zooplankton. But when these aquatic organisms die, they fall down into a region of the oceans that is very low in oxygen, very low in light, and it's just very difficult for things to live down there. And so, the, and a lot of times they get buried in mud as well. So here we see them buried in the mud. And over time, they basically get pressure cooked and turned into oil and natural gas. So we call these things fossil fuels. All of these things basically were either uh, photosynthetic organisms or microorganisms that ate photosynthetic microorganisms. And the energy in their bodies, these carbon compounds got trapped in these, these fossil fuels. Now, another thing that happens is CO2 moves into the ocean through a process of diffusion. Uh, and in fact, the vast majority of the carbon dioxide in the world is not in the atmosphere, it's in the ocean. 93% of it is in the ocean. And, and, and it's worth noting, and we'll come back to this later in the year as well, that carbon dioxide, like most gases, it's more soluble at low temperatures than it is at high temperatures. So what we find is in the region, in the polar, like Arctic and Antarctic regions where the water is very cold, carbon dioxide uptake is very large. But in the equatorial regions, uh, the surface water tends to release carbon dioxide. <clears throat> now, when carbon dioxide enters seawater, uh, what happens is it basically carbon dioxide will react with water uh, to, I hate that thing over there. One of you guys had to help me figure out how to make that thing go away. It's been on my computer 
for two years now and it's driving me nuts and I don't know how to make it go away. It's just going to come right back. Anyway, what happens is it reacts to form this carbonic acid and carbonic acid has a CO3 ion in it and CO3 is uh, the carbonate ion. Now the carbonate ion is soluble with a few things, but it's also insoluble in a lot of things. So we're talking in terms of solubility in water. So it's soluble in water when it's combined with hydrogen or say sodium, but not when it is with things like calcium. So what happens is many marine species, many, 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 we're talking about, you know, clams, snails, corals, zooplankton, so many, bryozo, and so many things. What they do is they build their shells by combining the carbonate ions that are in seawater with calcium ions that are in water, and they precipitate them out to make this calcium carbonate skeleton or shell. Uh, or test as we might call it. And so the net result of this is carbon dioxide that came into the water ends up being trapped, at least the carbon, ends up being trapped in the shells of these organisms. And it gets trapped there for quite a long time. So when, when we have carbon that gets trapped, we call it sequestered. So a lot of the world's carbon budget gets sequestered in, in invertebrates that live in the oceans and in freshwater, but mostly in the oceans. <clears throat> now, when these organisms die, and I don't know if you've ever been snorkeling on a coral reef, I hope you have, because it's one of life's great pleasures, you'll see that the bottom of it is like this layer of almost like cement, because well, cement is basically made out of calcium carbonate. So these, these organisms pile up, and over millions of years, they just make this really thick layer of, of shells and corals and things like that. And, and over time, with heat and pressure, it becomes what we call limestone. You know, if you've been to Thailand or the Philippines, you might have seen these really beautiful limestone. Because limestone is found all over the world. Limestone is calcium carbonate. It got made from shells and corals and stuff like that, and it's full of carbon. So limestone is a rather large reservoir of carbon on our planet. Now, so if we think in terms of reservoirs of carbon, like where is the carbon located on our planet? Basically, uh, it's it's found in our forest. Trees are basically made out of cellulose, and cellulose is a carbon compound that was a byproduct of photosynthesis. Coal, oil, and natural gas are basically trees and phytoplankton that sank to the, to the, into the swamps and got buried underground. So, so all the coal, oil, and natural gas on a planet is a big reservoir of carbon compounds. Seawater itself is, and so is limestone. So, uh, uh, when wood gets burned, it's going to release that carbon. And if it, it's kind of interesting to think about this. Like where I come from in Washington State, people burn wood all the time. You know, when you have a, a, you know, friends over, you just get out of your backyard and you make a fire. It's just something you do. People use it to heat their houses, whatever. Okay, you have a fireplace, wood stove. Anytime you burn wood, basically you are taking carbon atoms that were taken out of the atmosphere by photosynthesis. Say this tree is, you know, the trees in my backyard are probably 150, 200 years old. So if I was to chop one of those down and burn it, I'm basically releasing carbon in the atmosphere that's been stored in my backyard for one or 200 years. Well, fossil fuels are the same thing, except in this case, we're talking this carbon has been stored for like, you know, hundreds of millions of years. Now, in limestone, it, it moves very slowly. So limestone, uh, it gets slowly pushed under, uh, I think I've got a diagram of it here. Uh, no, nah, darn, I don't. Okay, so basically, we'll talk about plate tectonics this year. And basically what happens is, as the, as the ocean material moves, it shoves the, the materials down. Oh, you know, I do have a diagram here. I know I did this. Okay, let me just see if I, oh man, I lost it. Darn, it was a great one too. But basically what happens is that, that carbon dioxide, no, I'm screwing up here at the end. <laughs> oh no. Uh, what happens is uh, limestone in the ocean can be subducted or pushed underneath the continents. And as it moves down, it melts, it becomes magma and it mixes with other liquid rock material. And when it erupts out of the volcanoes, the carbon that was in the limestone is now released as carbon dioxide. Okay, sorry, it took me a while to get through that one here. Okay, so here's an a, a, a image of the carbon cycle. It's pretty much got most of the stuff, except it doesn't have uh, the, um, the volcanoes here. So you might want to take a look at this one here. All right, uh, that's it. And I'll have to add the, the book section on here when I get a chance. All right, let's stop this.